Hi there, this is Linda and welcome back to my channel. On, in this video, I'm going to be putting together a spread in my 2022 Project Life album for the week of August 22nd through 28th. I'm going to be using the August Stories by the Month kit from Ali Edwards. I have my photos printed out here and I printed, let's see, I've got five four by six photos and four three by four photos and one smaller photo and this one's a horizontal three by four so I know I'm gonna probably put that in one of the four by six pockets. Um, I wanted to jump on here though and before I dive into my process go through this kit because every time when I'm printing my photos I will often look at the kit just to kind of get an idea of what types of stories the kit is bringing out and if you've been following me this year, you know I'm using these four repeated cards every time for the stories by the month. And I have to tell you, while I love the stories that they're bringing out and the repetition of my album, it's now August and I'm getting a little sick of it. I do still want to use them because at the end of the year I want to have that continuity through my album. But I saw these four cards and I absolutely love them and I thought that they would be super fun for this week. So what I decided to do is these five repeated cards that I always use, I'm going to save them and I'm going to use them for next week, which is August 29th through September 4th. And although that week does go into September quite a bit, it is the absolute end of August and I it is currently September 4th and I looked through my photos and stories and not a lot happened this week. So I think it'll be a great week to do my reflections on the month and for this week, August 22nd through 28th, which happened to be fairly busy, although I didn't have a ton of photos, um, I think that these stories would be really great. So what I'm gonna do is put these ones aside and use car other cards from the kit for this specific week. And then I will use what's left in this kit for next week with those cards that I have put aside. That means I need to pull out another one of these cards to be a title card. And I absolutely love this card so much. So I'm very I'm definitely going to use that one. I also really love the quote on this one, but I really just, I love the rainbow there. This card is super fun. Um, but I feel like this is one where you either want to do like small photos or small stories or bits of ephemera. And I didn't have something that kind of went with that this week. So I'm going to save that one. And I'm also going to save this one because I don't think I have space for it. Um, but these ones and these ones are specific prompts. So what I did before jumping on here is I looked through my stories for this week, which you know I always put on a sticky note here, and my photos, and I came up with four stories to put on these cards and three stories to put on these. And I believe my plan, I think, is going to be to cut these out and put these on different spots rather than keep them on one card because I don't want to devote an entire four by six pocket to this card because I do have five four by six photos plus this one which gets to the seven and then I have this last photo which is horizontal which will take up the eighth pocket so I don't want this to take up a full pocket instead I'm going to cut these out and what I did was when I came up with stories I made these three stories about my daughter and specifically things that were happening in her life that I was not a part of. These stories um, are more focused on me. One of them is stuff I did with my daughter and the other ones are just, one's actually about my cat and the other two are just general like my life type stories. What I'm not going to do this week is include a bullet point list of other stories from the week. I might add some of those onto my photos or I might just skip them this week but this is kind of my plan going into it and what I'm going to do I think is pull out the stamp and use this one potentially is kind of what I'm thinking because I have this four by six or three by four photo that needs a four by six pocket I'm thinking I'm going to do like a stamped background but I'm not entirely sure yet so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put you on fast forward and crop up my photos lay everything out and dive into my process Okay, as usual, I start my process by cropping out my photos. So you will see here that I thought I had enough photos and I kind of said that in the introduction where I 
didn't realize that I was short a photo because this photo I'm cropping right now of my daughter that is smaller than three by four, I intend to put on a four by six, actually not that one, the one of her and her friends is horizontal. And I counted it as a three by four. So I end up being short one photo, one three by four photo. And I don't realize that until I'm done cropping out all of my photos. Um, when I'm planning out my spread, because I'm not cropping and laying things out as I go, I'm kind of just keeping track in my head of how many I've printed. And sometimes I'm off and sometimes I need to go back and print another one. Sometimes I print too many and end up not using a photo. Um, if I wanted to be more precise, I would sketch it out as I'm going, or I would, um, Either, or I would crop and lay things out before I print additional photos, but I don't want to do that because I want to film the entire process for you. So I'm going back and forth trying to figure out where everything's going to go. And yeah, so this is what I was thinking. And then I was like, oh, I thought I had another four by six spot. And the problem was that photo of my daughter that is in one of the three by four pockets on the right hand side there with all of her friends that is slightly smaller than three by four. I had counted it twice. I counted it as a four by six and as a three by four because I intended to put it on a four by six pocket. So this card right here had these three spots for stories. And in the intro, I said, I want to use this to tell three stories about my daughter this week. And I want them to be paired with those photos of her um, and her friends. So what I decided to do was do those on two four by six spots. And then I have this one extra three by four spot left. So what I did was I went back to my computer and printed out another photo. I didn't have another photo from this week I wanted to include, but we went to see a movie called The Invitation this week. And so what I did was I found the movie poster for that on Google Images, and I just printed that out as a three by four. On the backs of those cards, I decided to use black paper because this kit has such vibrant rainbow colors. I think it pairs super well with black and white and the boldness of that. So that's why I decided to go with the black. I decided for the four journaling cards that I wanted to type my journaling and use the same type of treatment for all of them because they are the same style card. And I think it would just help repeat kind of that or focus in on that fact that those cards are all very similar. So what I did was I printed out my journaling on vellum and cropped it down and then I'm going to adhere it onto those cards and then you add a word phrase strip. Because it's vellum, I'm using an adhesive that's meant for vellum because it's less you can't see it as well through the vellum, but it's still not perfect. If anyone has any suggestions for how to adhere vellum down other than, you know, stapling or sewing, but something where I can just kind of glue it down if I don't want anything else on there that you can't see through the vellum, I would really appreciate that. So I went through the word phrase strip sheet that came with the kit and just picked out some phrases that fit the stories that I was telling on these four cards and adhered it down right at the base of the vellum so that it kind of attach the vellum to the card a little bit more. And then I added a, a small staple from my tiny attacher at the top of each one. Next, I decided that I wanted to use the label st um, stamp from the kit to create a, my own label to add my dates onto the title card. I decided to pull over my Misty tool for this. I don't use my Misty that much. I'm just not so great at stamping. I don't think I'm not very great at using the Misty. I even with the Misty, I feel like, see, when I pull it up, the cardstock moves and then I don't always get in the same spot again, which is the entire point of the Misty. But for some reason, it did work out this time and I was able to stamp this twice. I tend to use it for larger stamps when I really want to make sure that I get a clear image. So that's why I chose to use my Misty this time. And then I'm going to cut out this label. And I kind of thought that this would kind of mirror those yellow labels that I cut out on the other side there. And then I want to use this to add my dates to my title card. Because the sentiment on this card is so tall, I decided to put this along the side, which I thought is also kind of interesting for the card because it's something a little bit different. And so the, the dates are going to go across here vertically. Um, so they'll be sideways on the page. And I think that's going to be super cute. Um, originally, I put a little dash between them, but then I realized the chipboard has these um, asterisks and I thought that would be a fun embellishment to add between the dates. So I went ahead with that. 
Then I'm looking through this chipboard set and trying to find ways that I can include other pieces from it on my cards. These chipboard pieces are much thinner than the ones that Ali used to offer and they are not adhesive backed. So I'm using the rolling adhesive just to adhere them down. I'm looking through the word phrase chips to see if I want to include anything else and kind of trying to finish up the other cards before I move on to these two black cards that have the labels on them. What I decided to do to treat these cards was to do some um, heat embossing. And this is something that I love to do, but I often just don't really think about it because it takes much longer and it's a bit messier, but I always love how it turns out. So I took this stamp from the kit that says um, ready for the good vibes that matches that title card. And I'm just making a repeated pattern on the four by six card and using white um, embossing powder to cover it. Now, when you're doing something like this, you're not going to get a perfect stamped image and that's that has to be okay with you. If you wanna do a repeated stamped pattern, it's just not gonna be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, I would suggest using the digital stamp and not um, messing around with a physical stamp because it's never going to get a perfect image. The heat embossing though, I think gives a really fun effect of the white popping on this black. And I really love how it turns out. So I just did the um, stamping and laying down the powder onto both of these cards. And then I'm going to um, heat emboss them at the same time. Because you need to adhere, um, put the powder on the ink while it's wet. You don't want to do all the stamping for everything at once. You need to pour the powder on but then you can leave it with just the loose powder on there as long as you need to get all of your pieces ready and then do the heat embossing. The heat embossing takes a little bit, but it's super fun to watch it pop out. You can see I flip the card over occasionally and put the heat on the back. That's because the heat starts to make the paper curl as you're um, pushing it on there. Um, for a bit. So when you put it on the back, it will make the paper curl back the other way. And that way your finished product will be flat. You can kind of see there as I did the heat embossing that the color really popped out um, from what it looked like when it was just the loose powder. Um, it's harder to see on here than it is in person, but it really gets super vibrant. And I think that I just kind of wanted to bring this out because, you know, December daily is happening right now. And even though it is still September, um, you know, I have December daily on the mind with all the products that just came out and heat embossing is something I love to do as part of that project. And we'll definitely end up doing this year. So now what I decided to do is adhere the photos down and adhere down these labels. And my thought is that this one photo has one label and then the other photo is going to have the two. And I'm going to just write down three stories about my daughter this week that didn't involve me, things that she did. She's 17 and she drives and has her own car. So she has a lot going on that I am not a part of. This photo here was her with her friends. They went to a concert. So I put that on this label and then this one was a photo that she took with this app that is super popular right now according to her called be real um, i didn't have a story related to that instead i used that photo just as a placeholder or i just wanted to include it with these labels and then the story i told on these were about her cross-country tryouts which i guess that photo was taken at cross-country so it kind of fits and about the fact that she took the sat this saturday I also wanted to point out the um, photo there of my cat stretching. Um, I actually had taken that as a vertical photo and I thought it looked super fun, turned on its side as a horizontal photo. And then that chipboard piece that is a hexagon, I think looks super cool in the arch of my cat's back there. And I thought that was just a super fun way to embellish that card. So at this point, I decided that my spread is done. Um, I pretty much left it simple other than those two cards that are heat embossed. And I think when you do something like that, that's so busy, having the simple cards next to it um, really works. The only thing that I kind of regret is that card of my, of the photo of my new cubicle is kind of boring and I didn't really have anything to go on it. But I think overall, I love how the spread turned out. Thanks for being here. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you.